Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Victor of Cars Jubilee, and today we're back in my Ionic 5, and we're actually at over half a year's worth of ownership. In fact, we're around eight months into ownership of this car, and I figured now would be a good time to review what's been good and what's been bad. Now, I did do a likes, dislikes video way back when we first bought the car, but things change. So, let's see how we feel about it now. Let's get to it. Let's start with the range first, because the range and efficiency of our all-wheel drive limited Ionic 5 has been way better than I would have imagined. It far exceeds the EPA rating and by a significant amount. EPA rating for this one, because it has the 20 inch wheels, is only 244 miles of range. Whereas I, over the past several months, especially in the warmer weather, have been consistently getting well over 300 miles of range on a full charge. In fact, I've seen 330, 340, just really, really good numbers. In fact, I recently did a video where I compared my Ionic 5 against a Model Y, which is typically known to be one of the most efficient vehicles in this class. And the Ionic 5 actually did a better job on my morning commute in terms of range and efficiency. So really, if you drive this Ionic 5 with an understanding of the regen system, how it works, how the paddles work, and how to disengage the front motor, then you can get some crazy efficiency numbers. Really, really good. But you have to understand how this regen system works. You have to understand how to disengage the front motor. Otherwise, you're probably gonna get roughly the EPA rated numbers. The other flip side to that is that if you have a lower spec car, meaning if you have the SC or the SEL with the 19 inch wheels, or if you're running the rear wheel drive model, you'll probably get some ridiculously good range and efficiency numbers. The second thing that's been really good is just this really, really flexible regen system and also highway drive assist. Between the regen system and the paddles, the lane centering and the adaptive cruise, this thing provides just the full driving experience. Meaning if I want to be super engaged, I can drive this car in a way that feels like I'm driving a manual transmission car. However, if I don't want that, if I want to relax and be disengaged, I can do that too and have a completely hands-off, foot-off driving experience. And it's been truly awesome. It does it so well. Whether that means I'm in stop and go traffic or I'm on the highway on a road trip, this thing drives itself extremely well. There's just so much flexibility here that you can fine tune it to whatever way you want to drive. No matter what road conditions you hit, you're going to find a way to drive this car comfortably. In fact, I'm not sure any other manufacturer has come close to matching this system in terms of how good it is. You want one pedal driving? It's got it. You want no pedal driving? It's got it. You want to do everything in between that and be able to come to a full stop with just these paddles it's got that too and the kicker is that it's fun it's just so much fun to use these paddles on a daily basis to bring this car to complete stop another thing that we've really liked is this bright and airy interior let's open this up and having sat in some competitors before and after we bought this car the interior here it still stands out. We've road tripped comfortably. I've charged comfortably, which is what I'm doing right now. The interior space is truly lounge-like. And then there's the ride quality and the interior noise. And I noticed these things immediately during my first test drive, and they still hold true today. This car is extremely quiet and the ride is extremely smooth. Even daily driving this thing in the city of Philadelphia, it puts me at ease. It helps me relax. It helps me tune out everything else that's going on during my commute. And if you wanna know what that looks like, I've got a Ionic 5 in Philadelphia video, so check that out. And then there's the power and the speed of this thing. This thing absolutely rockets from a stop. Three, two, one, go. There's no wheel slip. There's no drama, there's no fuss, it just goes. And the result is you'll beat pretty much 
everything you see off the line when you're stopped at a light. Although that may also be because they're just too busy staring at your car. At this point, I've kind of gotten used to it. Daily driving this thing for, you know, the past five or six months. I'm used to the stairs. I'm used to the thumbs ups and the waves and people coming up to me and saying, hey, is that an electric car? Man, that thing looks awesome. But my wife, she recently started driving this more as her daily driver and she's not used to it. She's starting to get the looks and everything else. So it's fun for me to hear stories from her when she gets home. She'll say, oh, someone gave me the thumbs up today when I drove by or someone waved at me when I drove by or I had a whole construction crew stare at me as I drove by or a coworker stopped me as I was going to the car today. It's just fun for me to hear stories about that. Uh, I mean, for her, she doesn't, so, she doesn't really like the attention that much. Luckily, our windows are tinted, so they can't really see her. But for me, I enjoy it. I like talking to people about cars. So in that sense, this thing's perfect. And then there is the charging speed. This thing charges so fast in warm weather, way faster than I really imagined. And honestly, I didn't think charging speed really mattered to me. But now that I've actually experienced it, it's hard to imagine going to a car that charges two or three times slower than mine. Getting 60 or 70% charge back within 20 to 30 minutes is pretty wild. So this charging station is connected to a target and usually I'll go in the target, I'll start shopping and I'll look down and I'll think, oh shoot, I gotta get out of here. The car's almost done charging. So I have to rush myself to self checkout to just get out of there in time because this car charges so fast. So what about some common complaints? I feel like I want to address those. Number one is the fact that there's no rear wiper. Well, in my ownership experience so far, I haven't come across a scenario where I felt, oh man, I wish there was a wiper back there. I haven't. I honestly haven't. In rainy conditions, I feel like I can still see enough of what I would need to see. The caveat here is we bought this car and then it didn't really snow much in February. so. We'll have to take it through our first true winter to see what that's like. At least so far in rainy conditions, I haven't missed having a wiper back there. And then another common complaint would be the Bose sound system in the limited trim or top spec for other markets. And when I first got it, I thought, yeah, this system's kind of so-so. And then I spent a couple weeks, maybe even a month or so, just kind of fine tuning the settings. And I've reached a point now where I think it's actually okay. It's not an amazing system, but I think it does the job. I think it's perfectly fine. And now, how about what's been bad? Well, the very first thing I think I should mention is just the poor app user experience. The apps are slow and laggy and glitchy, and it feels like it's kind of gotten worse. And then there's the door handle sensors. This thing, for some reason, doesn't pick up my phone well when I try to use phone as key. It also doesn't pick up my key card very well when I try to use that. And sometimes when I'm leaving the car and I need to lock the car, it doesn't even pick up my finger. It takes one try, two tries, sometimes even three tries. And by that time, I'm just like, ah, I'm just gonna lock it with a remote. And then there's also kind of that weird programming thing where when I approach the car with the key in my pocket, it automatically unlocks. But well, let's say instead of opening the door first, I went to the trunk because I had to put something in. Well, by the time the trunk closes and I go back to open the door, the doors have automatically locked because I haven't opened them yet. I wish they would let us kind of fine tune the settings ourselves because there's also no true auto lock feature. It only auto locks if you're close enough and it unlocks, but you never open the door. If you were to have opened the door and then closed it and then walk away, your car is going to stay unlocked. And then there's the cracked windshield. And after I jumped on the forums and talked to a lot of other owners, I was kind of hearing the same thing. They had tiny, tiny impact zones that shattered the entire windshield. And a bunch of people were saying, yeah, this is the first cracked windshield I had had in my life, which is the same for me. I've never had a cracked windshield until this car. So I don't know if that means maybe 
there is a design flaw maybe this windshield is just more fragile or it's thinner i don't know but i did look at the other cracked windshields at safe flight when i was there and they for the most part had some pretty large impact zones where it was very clear why it cracked very different from what i was seeing with with my ionic 5 and with other ionic 5 owners and finally, there's servicing this Ionic 5, which has been difficult to say the least between finding dealers that are actually Ionic 5 certified and willing to work on this car, and then also just dealing with, dealing with the fact that this is a $57,000 car, which is priced at luxury car territory, but the service you get is not quite like that. Meaning if you have a Tesla, well, you get mobile service where they'll come to you, or if you go to them, they'll give you a loaner when it's needed. Or if you're used to service from, say, a BMW or a Volvo or even a Genesis, well, they have what's called valet service. They'll come to you, they'll pick up your car, and they'll leave a loaner there for you, and they'll take your car to the dealer, they'll service it, they'll bring it back, and when it's all said and done, they'll bring your loaner back to the dealer, meaning you could have gotten your car serviced without ever leaving your house. And that's just not what you get with the Ionic 5. So is that a deal breaker? Well, I think it really depends on where you're coming from and what you're expecting. If you're expecting a luxury car service experience, you're not gonna get it. And that might be a deal breaker for you. Now for me, I don't think this will prevent me from looking at future Ionic products, but it is something that I have to keep in mind that hey, I'm buying a car that's a little more expensive than I'm used to and it's priced at luxury car pricing. The service that I'm going to get just simply isn't that. So anyways, I hope this video helps give you guys a good update of what's been good, what's been bad. And for those of you who've had your Ionic 5s for a long time, how's it been for you? Anyways, thanks for watching. See you guys later.